What's up guys, this episode we're diving into Rails application templates. Now this has been a requested topic a lot because I've been making these episodes and I start off a lot of these episodes with an application that's already kind of pre-configured and it has bootstrap and font awesome and devise and a few other things already set up so that we can focus that video on the feature I'm talking about. And so this episode, I'm gonna walk you through how I set up those applications and give you that template so that you can set up your applications using this as well. So what I'm using is a Rails application template and these are basically just Ruby scripts that you pass in when you create a new Rails app. And after it's done creating the new Rails app, it runs the code in your script to add things to the gem file, to configure files, to go modify files, to add routes or environment configurations, all kinds of different things. And that will go and pre-configure your Rails app. So when you're done, you have an app that's already good to go with several things already configured and you can save yourself a lot of time. Now this stuff is all built off of something called Thor, and so if you wanna do some more advanced things like copying files and things like that, um, Thor's actually got a lot of documentation that you wanna check out as well because the Rails application template guide is really just Rails specific kind of stuff for the most part. It shows you how to add gems, add routes, create scaffolds or generate models, that type of thing. Um, and all of that is great and all, but it's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily um, have to do if you were building something outside of Rails. So Thor is something you wanna check out as well. And Jumpstart is my template that I've created for the Go Rail screencast. So the way that this works and how to use the template is first you're going to want to create a new application. This does not apply to existing applications, unfortunately, but it would be too complicated if it had to. So we only can use this on new Rails apps. And what you can do is you have two options. You can either clone the repository and then reference the template file, um, which is the second example, or if the template's been configured properly, you can actually use it through a URL. I need to make a change to this because I'm using the copy file function and um, with the URL option, it actually can't find all the files and that version will fail currently, but we're gonna make a fix to that so that it will work after this episode. So let's take a look at what it looks like when you create a new app from scratch on the command line after you've done a git clone of Jumpstart. So here I've got a clone of Jumpstart. We can print that out and I've already got an application called my app in here that I've created with it. So when you want to create a new application, you'll call it whatever, uh, you want, and then you'll specify that template.rb, and optionally you can say, I wanna use PostgreSQL, MySQL, whatever it is, I would recommend Postgres. In this example, we're just gonna use SQLite to keep it easy, and I'm gonna create a new application called whatever. You'll see here that it creates a new app like normal, except it's gonna take a lot longer, and the reason for that is it's applying this template. And so here you can see it referenced the template. It's adding to the gem file, administrate, devise, bootstrap, um, all these other gems that I've specified in my template. And it's gonna go through and install that and do everything that I've configured it to do. So once this is done, we'll have a brand new Rails application with all that stuff pre-configured for us and we can just dive into using it. So the way that these templates work is you write a big old Ruby script, and of course you can split this out into other files if you wanted, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. I created and organized functions to do different things like add gems, add the user model, and some other configuration related to users. I've got adding bootstrap, copying templates, add webpack, add sidekick, and so on. You can see all these methods describe what they do and we can organize them however we like. And then here at the bottom, when this command, or when the script gets run, it will run each of these methods in order. So first we're gonna add the gems, then after it's run bundle install, then we're going to add the users, bootstrap, sidekick, foreman, webpack, and all of those gems are already installed, but the configurations are not. So we're doing it after the gem is there so that we can set up the configuration uh, correctly. So then it goes through all of these commands and we then copy some templates and run Rails DB create, Rails DB migrate, and we run administrate and commit all of that to your Git repo. So this is pretty cool what it does and all of these things 
are broken down into those commands that are listed on the template API for Rails application templates. They are gem, to add a gem to your gem file. You can run a generate command, so if you've got the device gem installed, you can run rails generate device colon install. That works just like you would expect it. The environment option is really cool. You can specify your development environment. Should have this config action mailer default URL options pointing to localhost 3000. Um, device views bootstrapped can be run. We can add routes to our routes file. And then you can do some G subs and things like that, that the underlying for Thor functionality will give you, such as with this migration, we actually want to set the admin flag as false by default. And so we can go and use G sub file in order to modify that file. We get the file name, what we're looking for and the replacement text, and that will do the update of the file for us. So now that our application is properly generated, let's go into it and run mvim dot so we can take a look at what we've got. Now one of the first files that you'll notice is the most configured is actually your routes file. And that file actually has a section up here for administrate. It's got a couple of routes that I've added uh, for privacy policy in terms of use. Um, because pretty much every application needs that. We've got notifications and announcements. We've got a section for Sidekick, which is authenticated using device. And we've got our device line here already configured to use our OmniAuth callbacks. And our home page is set to home index. And all of that is done automatically with that script, which is really, really handy. So let's take a look at how this application works. The way that we need to run this now is using our proc file. So our proc file sets up a rail server, sidekick, and our webpack dev server. And we're gonna need to use form and start instead of rails s in this case, because we wanna make sure that all three of those are running and that will get us up to speed the fastest. So with that said, um, this is going to run on localhost 5000 now because we're using the form and port you can actually specify the port inside the proc file to be a localhost 3000 if you want. But once that's booted up, you're gonna get a new application like so that's already got your nav bar and your sticky footer. So the footer will always be at the bottom of the page that um, is already set up using Bootstrap. And all of our device views have what we have here, which is the device uh, bootstrapped gem that a fellow community member, Andrew Femerum, built. And so that gem is going to configure our device views to use Bootstrap. We don't have to do any of that work ourselves unless we wanna tweak it. So right now we have an application that doesn't really do too much just yet, but let's add, say, a post model so that we have something to interact with. So I'm gonna add a scaffold for post. I'm gonna have user references. I'm gonna have a title and a body. And we're going to add this to our application so you can see just how quickly we can get up to speed with something like this. So we'll run Rails DB migrate. We'll go to our routes file. We're going to take this resources post and we're just gonna move this down here to the bottom. And then we'll change that to post index as the root route. And then that way we'll see posts automatically on the home page. Then we can go to our post controller that we just generated and we'll set it up so that when we create a post at post dot user equals current user and we'll say before action authenticate user and this can be accept everything except index and show instead so index and show will be available to any logged out users but if they want to create edit or destroy a post, they have to log in. So that will be just a really simple example of how to do that. Then we can go to our application and we'll see that we now have post here. Um, we'll not fill out the user there. So let's go to the post form and let's get rid of that user section. Then we can go replace these with form group, form group and form group. We can add class of button, button primary to our button, and class of form control 
to our fields. And that's going to make it styled with Bootstrap a little nicer. And then we'll have test post and some content for the body. And we can create our post and that will be there on the home page. So all of those work. And one cool thing is that we have an admin area from administrate, but we can't access it right now. And we can't go to slash admin because we're not authorized. So it's automatically configured to authorize that only for admin users. And the way to set up an admin user to run rails console user.last.update admin is true so we'll set that user to be an admin if we refresh our page the admin area now shows up in the nav bar and if we click that we get taken to administrate now one thing we don't have is this was already generated before we added the post so we need to create the dashboard for posts and so we can do that by running rails g administrate dashboard post now we'll create the post dashboard and post controller for administrate that will show up here but only after we create the routes for it so it doesn't actually generate the routes which feels kind of weird maybe that will be a feature that uh, they add in the future for administrate but in your namespace admin you're going to need to set uh, resources post in there as well in order to get it to show up. Now we have posts and we can see our user one. Even if you click on user one, it will go to the correct user, which is nice. Administrate works really well for this and gives us quite a good little application that we can start with. That is the foundation for all of the Go Rails episodes that I've been doing for the past you know, year or something when I've been using this template. So it's been really nice to have this because it gets us up and running a lot faster. Probably my favorite thing about these templates is just how much you can imagine adding to these to make your life easier. For example, it'd be really nice if it added payments and email receipts and all kinds of other things like Stripe and Braintree support. Um, we can just imagine a lot of other things being built into this and having that automatically ready to go as soon as you create your new application. Maybe even including something like Ahoy or Segment.io so that you could add analytics to your application. That would be incredibly cool. But even if it was as simple as adding overrides to your templates for scaffolds where they automatically would come out with bootstrap designs like the form here or it redesigned the index page so it used nicer bootstrap um, layouts or UI, that even would be a huge improvement that could save a lot of time on building new applications. So with these templates, you can go as far as you want or even minimal and you will still save a lot of time. So that is it for this episode. I'll include links to Jumpstart in the notes below. So if you wanna add this to your Rails apps or you want to contribute to it or just check out how it works, it'll be listed in the links below as well as links to the Rails guides, and Thor's documentation so you can take a look at how to build your own from scratch. Until next time, I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.